But first, Anzac Day today. It was different. It was, it's been changed in an important way. And I think the war in Ukraine has done that. Now, the crowds were back this year in most places after two years of COVID restrictions, although not in Western Australia. They were back to honour the Australians who died in war, fighting not just for our safety, but for our values and our freedoms. And today that last part was underlined because for two months we've seen Ukrainians fight and die for their values, fight against insane odds to beat the Russian invasion to stay free, when many in the West thought the price would be too high for them. It would be safer just to surrender or to flee. The US even offered its president a flight to safety. Now, Anzac Day, it's actually gone through some phases in World War I. For instance, we lost 60,000 dead. It was a slaughterhouse. But just one of the men who died overseas was brought home during the war for burial. The rest were buried where they fell. Gallipoli, Europe, and few of the family back home could afford to travel all that way back then and stand over their graves. So Anzac Day was where they did their remembering and where they grieved. Later then, another change in the 60s and 70s, memories of the two world wars then dimming, things changed. Anzac Day was about the sacrifice, yes, but a lot of people said it was actually about the sheer uselessness of war. But today, Anzac Day, with Ukraine, you know, we're reminded that yes, war is horrible, it's evil. But sometimes when war is visited on you, when men with guns come to take away your freedom. Taking up arms can actually be noble and some things are worth going to war for. You haven't heard that much in past Anzac ceremonies, although you did hear that today, like from the Prime Minister. What ultimately matters in that task is a people with a fierce and protective love of their nation and of their liberty. A love of home, family, community and country. A willingness to live for all of these things, but if necessary, to sacrifice for something far greater than ourselves. This morning, far away from here, the people of Ukraine are doing exactly that. Now, even Labour leader Anthony Albanese of the left said much the same today in a video that he released to mark the day since he's stuck in COVID isolation. As the war in Ukraine so tragically reminds us, darkness is not vanquished from the world. It reminds us that freedom cannot be taken for granted. It reminds us that freedom isn't free. And defence me to Pete. Peter Dutton reminded us that we have no option now but to get ready for war with threats like China growing so much worse. The only way uh, that you can, you can preserve peace is, is to prepare for war and to be strong as a country, not to cow and not to uh, you know, be on bended knee and uh, be uh, you know, weak. Now Dutton was attacked for saying that. There are still a lot of people who think it's warmongering as if threats could be just wished away by closing your eyes. Now, if Ukrainians had done that and not prepared for this war, Ukraine today would be Russian. Now, it's true that all these uh, fine speeches is just talk. And you could ask, in fact, I think you should ask why past Labor and our Liberal governments left us so short of the main weapons we need now. Now, not in 20 years time. But talk and ceremonies like Anzac Day are still very important because unless we remind ourselves why we must fight, we never will, never can. And Anzac Day today was a reminder not just of the cost of war, but the need to be ready for the next.